Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part three of BDD series, but it's a continuation of part two. Since in part two we discussed about Gherkin syntax, we also discussed about features, backgrounds, and also we discussed about scenarios, how the given when then stuffs works. But we also have some more features and some more syntax in Gherkin's, which are very handy while working with the parser tools like specflow so before starting this series I would suggest you to watch part 2 since it's a continuation of it scenario outline scenario as discussed in part 2 is different from scenario outline since scenario outline has one more syntax used in conjunction which is examples the main purpose of scenario outline is to perform multiple iteration of same scenario with different data which is listed in the examples. Just recollect the scenario which we discussed in part 2. In scenario, we didn't have a syntax called examples. We only had a scenario and we had a list of statements like when, when, then, and. But within and or within then, we had a table which has data, right? What if there is a situation where we might need to execute multiple iteration of same scenario with different data? So at that point, we may need to, in a programming language like Selenium or QDP or Robotium, we used to use the for loops where we will have a number of test cases or number of data which we're going to execute and then we put them in a for loop and then we'll execute and based on the number of data within our particular data set the for loop will be executed and the, and the test case or the scenario will be executed based on the number of data which is available whereas in this case we don't have a for loop since this is just a plain text and we cannot even use that so in order for that to execute we have something called scenario outline as you can see in this particular example for the scenario outline what I'm doing is register a user and check if the user logged in so what I'm trying to do is I'm first opening a development site then I'm clicking the register link and I enter the username password and confirm password as you could see everything every parameters like username password confirm passwords are in an angle bracket which means they are the column names of the examples as you can see here the username has exactly the same case as that are, that's shown in the example so they are case sensitive so if we change the capital U as small u and capital N as small n then there will be a problem while finding the particular column name data since they are exactly they should be exactly the same thing and as you can see in the second line I have another angle bracket with the username register which means I am going to use this particular username as the parameter and I am trying to pass the value Johnson for this particular statement so what this scenario outline will, will do is it will transform the data which is available for this angle bracket parameters like username password and confirm password to the data is like Johnson, John123 and John123. So this will replace this particular values. So this is the beauty of scenario outline. Now the question is how do scenario picks up the data from the examples? How examples know what data is required by which scenario line during the execution? Let's take a close look at this example. Here the example have the same table structures. It has rows and columns. The column names such as username, password, confirm password are used as the arguments for the line shown below. That's what we discussed in the previous slide. The example will execute totally this scenario outline for two times since as you could see here the example has got two rows which means it has two sets of data. So it will execute the scenario outline for two times. If there are three rows, then this, it will execute the scenario for three times. So based on the number of rows of this examples, the scenario outline will execute the number of times, so which is very cool. Since you don't have to specify how many number of lines of data is there in the in the data set uh, as we do in Selenium, it's all out there 
as a plain text and the scenario outline with the conjunction with example will easily understand how to pick the data, when to pick the data and how many iteration it has to execute. So that's the beauty of the scenario outline with Gherkins. So that's it guys. This is the end of Gherkins tutorial and with our next parts we are going to discuss about specflow which is the parser. So I hope you guys have enjoyed so far the theoretical session. So from the next session we'll take our Visual Studio with specflow and we'll start working in practical way. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.